Bally Castle, set amidst the glens of Antrim, is a town of historical significance in Irish history and legend. It became prominent when its harbour was built in the mid-1700s by Colonel Hugh Boyd, who revolutionised the development of the town. The Bally Castle of today, with its vibrant retail, service and tourism trade, has maintained a unique sense of history and identity, as well as its appreciation of the arts, sport and the belief in its young people. All of this, a direct legacy of Hugh Boyd's business and social entrepreneurship. And I am that Hugh Boyd, born in 1690. I went away to Dublin and learned my trade in the glass industry, came back and started work on improving my hometown. Unlike many 18th century landlords, I had a great love for the place and its people. It was for them, as well as myself, that I built up the mining, brewery, salt works, soap making, flour mill, tannery and glass industries in Bally Castle, providing employment, encouraging trade and eventually stimulating tourism. Before the time of Boyd, Bally Castle consisted of two separate towns, Margie Town at the mouth of the River Margie, and the upper part of the town, Boyle and Castle, or Bally Castle, now the centre of the town known as the Diamond. There was originally a castle here, but it eventually fell into disuse and some of the stone was pilfered to build up other parts of the town in the mid 1800s. Bally Castle is a tourist destination in its own right, and also a gateway to other places of beauty on the Antrim coast, especially the Giant's Causeway. The town's own historical status is very much that of a conservation town, with attention to detail maintaining original features both inside and outside the buildings in Ann Street, Key Road and Castle Street. The legacy of hospitality here in the Moyle district is prolific, even if there is still a sense of friendly rivalry between the top of the town, from where came the natives, and Margie Town, with the gentry originally settled by the seafront. But the welcome here to tourists has always been warm. Well, my name is John Brown and I run a guest house fishing and camping here just on the outskirts of Valley Castle. Bally Castle has changed as, as a town because it's a different, it's foreign tourists that's coming in now. The product that they must, we must sell in the shops and stuff like that, you can see it's changing on the street. It's all these wee quaint uh, shops is, is opened up. That's the sort of thing we need. So, what do you suggest? And... There's the Giant's Causeway, they mind Actually, I'm here at the invitation of my sister-in-law, Lori, because um, her daughter is studying for a semester at a university in Derry. And so um, we all decided to come and visit her and uh, mm -hmm. make a, a lovely tour of it. And also, um, we're kind of looking at it as a Lowry uh, roots tour because uh, some of our family is um, from this area. The type of tourists we're getting here now, um, it changed from being a lot of German uh, tourists. Now we're having American, we're having Italian, Spanish. It's all European with, with Europe being all one now. We can see that coming in here and we're paying, the, getting the dividends from that. I have heard of Bailey Castle because of the family connections. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I had no idea that it was right on the edge, on, literally on the edge of, of Northern Ireland. And I had no idea how beautiful it was. It's just lovely. And we're, we're enjoying um, exploring. It, it's gorgeous. The local people are starting to see the tourists, what, what they're wanting, what they're buying. Um, everybody has to make a profit. So they quite quickly catch on to what the tourists is, is wanting and demanding. And you can see that as you walk down Bally Castle Street. The name of my shop is Snip, but that was an accident because it was supposed to be Snip Snip. And the chap who came to paint the, the name over, the, he could only make room for one Snip. A rehearsal on Wednesday. We, we managed all right. 
some will for people to knit with them. It's just more haberdashery. People don't want to have to go to cold rain to get a button or a reel of cotton. So it's, I'm still, I'm still useful here. The, 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 I mean, the houses are popping up all over the place. Um, uh, I, perhaps the business side now, the, the, the shops don't seem to sort of, um, shops don't seem to expand too much. You know, you've still got the little shops and not very big shops. The, the fact that we've got the marina down at the quay now brings in a different a different uh, class of people shall we say um, from foreign from foreign parts and um, they're they're very interesting and uh, they always seem to want to come back and they also invite they always, always they leave cards and want me to go out there to uh, to visit them. Have you, have you ever been to the top of Fairhead at about 10 o'clock on a September evening and looked across at, at Knock Glade, the heather turns every colour under the sun. Red, yellow, purple, gold, silver. I mean, it is magic. You know, it's just people believing in, believing in magic. I moved to the Park Manor overlooking the sea in 1739 to be closer to my new harbour and industries. But although industry and trade were always important to me, I could see that Valley Castle folk were forever entrepreneurial in mixing celebration and business. After all, they've been doing it for over 400 years with the Owl de Lammas Fair. Where are you from, sir? Newton Abbey. From Newton Abbey. Uh, are you here in business or in pleasure? Oh, up in pleasure, just for the evening. Well, well are you having a good time? Come on, boy, I've had a right few good times. I'm over in the Hunter of Arms Hotel there for a while. Well, I hope you haven't a hangover tomorrow, sir. Ah, don't think I will have. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes an Irish man to sing an Irish song. And who better to sing this song than Ireland's singing farmer, John Watt. Thank you very much, Charlie. better known to a lot of people as a singing farmer. Through singing I'm doing a bit of farming and a lot of people will say that I'm not overly good at either. But uh, I got into journalism back about 16 or 17 years ago writing about uh, local characters and uh, that sort of thing because I'm very interested in people and uh, you know they're very very interested in people around the town of Ballycastle and around the whole North Antrim coast of Glens. You couldn't get more interested in people in the world in my opinion. Well, of course, Ballycastle is steeped in history, as the history books tell us, starting with the Mr. Boyd, who built the town. Uh, I could only go back, well, well over 50 years. And although the town was growing in size and population at that time, it's still the same Ballycastle as it always was, because it's a unique place. Uh, the characters of the people are unique. They're friendly, very friendly people. And... Uh, you know, I think that uh, would that will go down in history forever because people will always remember as the met a Ballet Castle person when they come here on holiday for the day. That will go down forever. Where best you come from? <laughs> the Hellfast. Well, fast. Are yeah. you just down here for the fair? Aye. Have you ever been to the fair before? We're staying in Waterford, like we just come up from there. Well, you know? do you, do you, uh, are you enjoying yourself at the oh, fair? Aye. Have you bought any Dolphin Yellow Man? No. You have I bought Yellow Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you have a nice time. <laughs> Well, now Lambus Fair is worth coming to, to the fact that uh, it's, it's actually, I suppose, the shape of Ballet Castle. You know, it's a, uh, the fair is all over the place. It goes from the sea front right to the head of the town. I know it's changed a wee bit. Uh, it's maybe scattered a wee bit than it was when I was a young boy, but it, 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 it's unique in the fact that 
you get things at a lot of Australia that you wouldn't get anywhere else in any other fair in Ireland. <laughs> Jerry, I'm looking for a wick for an old oil lamp I have. Would you keep wicks? Oh yes, I keep wicks, yes. Uh, what size is your... My name is Jerry McKinley, or Gerard McKinley. I've been here over 50 years. The shop has been going here for a long time, probably since 1820. Dad had the fruit shop, yeah. And his uncle had the shop before that. So that's three, three of us. He, my granduncle, that was my granduncle. He was here with Mr. Sharp, and uh, then uh, Mr. Sharp died, and then uh, my dad was, or the uh, my granduncle was left holding the baby. <laughs> and then my dad came here when he was twelve and helped my uncle. Or granduncle, help me granduncle. So I've been going since my dad died, and he he's dead over fifty years. And now I hope to hand it on to my son. I use local resources such as coal, salt and lime to create industries like glass making. But times have moved on and traditional industries have declined here in Bally Castle. The hotel trade welcomed Marconi, who stayed in the Antrim Arms here behind me in 1898 when he was over inventing the new fangled wireless, leading us into the new age of service industries. Throughout the town are many other institutions and services, some of which have been present for over 100 years, and some a little more recent. What's happening here in Bally Castle is central. We are creating a new nightclub and to incorporate a 130-seater wine bar. Is, um, basically, we think the north coast here and Ballycastle needs something to uh, give it that wee bit more. Ballycastle has got a bigger town, so we feel that we it needs uh, like a wine bar restaurant type thing. Uh, guys, So, yeah, well, soon we we could bring a bit more to do. Yeah. Well, we've read enough the far corner. Of the uh, far corner. Well, you've a beautiful seaside town really to start with. You're on the start of the Nine Glens. Uh, you have Rathlin, you have the Rope Bridge, you have Fairhead. You know, I mean, it's uh, you've really everything in Ballycastle that anybody really needs, and we're seeing that more and more so with what people are buying second homes here, the influx of tourism. Basically, we're getting people from everywhere, and I think the people of Ballycastle are realising that we need to sort of cap your into that market as such. And hopefully, that's what we've provided here, and, and we're finding that more and more people uh, is, is going to travel. Tell us, we're getting people from Maherfelt travelling here to our nightclub as such, where uh, we've been vice versa before, or, or, or to different places in Belfast. We have a group of fellas that comes regularly, faithfully. To hear every weekend uh, Teller Night Club, which I, I find strange to a certain extent, but I think it's just what Ballycastle pr provides. It's got that buzz about it now. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's got the scenery, it's got your golf, you've got your tennis. Uh, it's, um, it's getting to be a very vibrant town as such. Progress is ever present in Ballycastle. And over the last 10 years, the town has increased in population threefold. And a bigger town in a now affluent country has created certain demands for an increase in services, including the beginnings of a cafe culture and the fashion trade. Oh, 
shop in Barry Castle and it's now been opened a year and before that I worked for, on the high street um, for the big multinationals for about 20 years and I decided to come away from that so I decided um, that I wanted to offer customers something a, a bit different uh, different clothes with a different type of service and more friendly um, customer service With all this progressive development in the town, we need to turn to the real spirit of the future. That's our young people and the things they get up to. Castle for the last seven years. A musician. Uh, I've been a music teacher for over 25 years and um, we've moved around a lot with my husband's job but um, we, we're nice and settled here in Ballycastle and since I've been here I've got involved with the young people in, in both schools, in Cross and Passion and in Ballycastle High School here. And um, straight away, as soon as I started, really, I started a choir in both schools. And uh, um, just getting the, the kids involved, they've, they've been really uh, excited about being involved in the choir. And a lot of them have been very, very committed, really. And um, I think that it's just helped them an awful lot. Um, uh, on a social level as well, just um, being with each other, uh, being involved in singing various uh, various events, and just it's built their confidence up as well. You're giving it off. And you're handing it down to him, okay? As you're getting it, you're coming up. Nice wee strike there to Kieran. Kieran, you're turning and running on here. Oh, you know, it keeps him off the street, you know. And they, they seem to love the hurling now, and it's bringing, bringing a lot of the young boys into anti fitness and stuff. And they seem, they're enjoying it. They seem to enjoy, enjoy this year, and the fitness is good for them. You know, it gives them a wee bit more respect, perspective on their lives and meeting new people as they, as they go on through the hurling career, me as a young hurler myself. I've, I've met a lot of, lot of new people through the county and stuff like that there, through the miners and stuff, and it's, you know, give me a, a, better, a better view onto the sport itself. Now, even myself, being 19, I know I'm a bit older than these boys, but I'm only a young boy myself. There's a lot more, a lot more what one of my age looking to get into the teaching of the sport as well as, as well as learning it. Um, as, as learning it now, I'm able to take what I'm learning straight to these young boys. I'm Joey Bride and I like her because just I grew up and able to play it and it's sort of part of my culture. Um, it's just a great game, gets you keeps you fit. It's good fun. You make lots of friends. Like I know lots of people now that I wouldn't have known for three hurdle night. Alright when you're ready then. Juliet Hannah, who calls? Your mother. Madame, I'm here. Where's your bell? Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? I am Matthew Gordon. I am a teacher here at Boston Lecture College. I've just started here in the last few months um, and I'm involved in the drama department. Um, I think now there seems to be an awful lot for young people to do. A lot of different experiences, clubs, um, drama based, performing arts based, and a lot of sports as well available for them to take okay. part in. We're going to keep going, pass it around. Remember, you have to catch it before you can pass it. Petty is overthrows. Doth with her death 
bury their parents' strife. I think it just gives a whole new dimension to their lives. I mean, there's children who are involved in what you saw up there. I mean, there's the wee confident ones. There's, you know, children who will always be involved in something. They're confident, they can act, they can sing, they can dance, they can do everything. And then there are children who came to it who'd never done anything like that in their lives. And uh, we were very surprised that they actually agreed to take part. And from them we have seen, uh, you know, this flowering of confidence. Well, I would hope, I would really hope that um, the children will be able to take part in more activities, more clubs, and really give them a lot of focus, because in such a small community that you really need to build a focus for children or else they could end up going astray. So you're getting a nice close-up of Bob's face. You're getting the guitar strings, Eamon. Mm -hmm. And you're getting a nice, that's an nice color. That's, yep, against that. So we'll do, we'll do the same again with Harry Hi, Hamill. I run the Ballycastle nice. Film Club, project coordinator, and I run screenings and film workshops and film courses for young people and for adults. My name is Shelley Ward, and um, I go to the Ballycastle Film Club, and it started um, when I went to one of the courses run by the Film Club, which we made a documentary on. It was called Eric's Gone, and I now I go to this club which is held every Thursday night and I'm now making my own film. In the Market Street building we're in we have loads of equipment, we have a space, a studio, we have an edit suite. Um, I'm finding young people are starting to, the Tuesday nights, there's nine at the minute doing the course and they're here every night early and they want to stay later than they're supposed to stay and they're really into it. She'd been in a wild land of Tokyo was some And you know what it's like when gossip is cheap Stories grow tall and trickles run deep Woman on the hill Woman on the hill Living around the coast, there's a connection. You feel you feel at home when there's, you know, that... Uh, there's a sense of yourself, you know, being in Ballycastle. I enjoy singing because my friends do it. Like, for instance, there was a Children's Voice of Ireland in Coromila, and me and Arlene, my friend, we both went to it and had a lot of fun. With it. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. There's loads of tourists coming into Valley Castle and the amusements and all, and it makes you feel good about your town that people actually come in to your town. And there's the park and the beach and beautiful surroundings, you know. If you walk up, there's a the forest. And we're really so lucky to have all that because like, some people live in the towns and cities and come so far away to get it. We have it on our doorstep. <laughs>
took us up and down, and uh, we had a lovely lunch at the pantry. Mm -hmm. And um, we went into a few of the shops. Really enjoyed the um, hardware store. Yes. McKinley, Sharp and McKinley. Sharp and McKinley. Bought some antique, uh, loaded with antiques. So it's really not a hardware store, it's really an antique shop. So we bought a couple antique locks and uh, rat traps. <laughs> Never know what you might need in Chicago. And um, we had a and lovely that, chat with yes. uh, Mr. McKinley. Right. And what a dear, what a dear man. And we had a lovely dinner then. We went to um, Anzac. Anzac. And, and, and uh, some very fine food. And one of the things we have been wanting to do since we got to Northern Ireland was to hear some traditional music. So we were thrilled to find that they were having that this evening. Um, we're just really enjoying it. Having a, a Guinness, and uh, uh, we got here early, so we have a front row seat for the, the traditional music tonight. So it's been a, a, a really a great day, as we haven't left yet. We're already talking about when can we come back, so <laughs> yeah, it's been wonderful. And although you've only witnessed a slice of life, I leave you with the traditions and hopes of a town very much in the present, where locals, settlers, and passing tourists share a smile and look to the future without forgetting the past that left us being Ballycastle. <laughs>